right. Good morning, everybody. How are we feeling this morning? A little more energized than 9 o'clock. I say y'all got y'all sleep, clearly. Listen, man, welcome to church. It's a, such an awesome day. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Listen, you made it. You're not at the lake. You're not at the beach. You made it to church. You own. You earn bonus points today for being in church. That's awesome today. Uh, also, welcome all of you who are at the lake and the beach watching online. Get a half a bonus point today. At least you're with us today. But truly welcome. Uh, listen, it's going to be a great day. Uh, go ahead and pull out your notes inside your worship guide. Follow along with us today as we are concluding our series, Meant for More, which this whole series has really been based around Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, and that's right there at the top of your outline. And it's this idea that no matter where we sit and stand in life, no matter what may have gone on, whether we're at the pinnacle and, man, we're hitting everything how it should be, or maybe things haven't worked out so well and we're feeling kind of down, we're still meant for more, that God's got more for us. And Ephesians 3, 20, it says this, says, Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. And if we really take that statement in, I mean, what a statement. To do more than we could ask or think. I mean, like, God, I don't, you don't know my dumb brain, God. You don't know kind of the crazy stuff that I can think of. Now, he does. He knows what you can think of, believe it or not. But, man, that is a huge thing. And all month long we've been breaking down this verse. In week one, we talked about more than your power. Right there, through his mighty power, believe it or not, his power is greater than yours. May hurt your feelings a little bit, but, you know, sometimes we need to be told the truth. His power is greater than yours. He's more than our accomplishments. You know, we like to stack up our accomplishments, the things that we've done. You know, we like to have a nice little pecking order and go through all the amazing things. But, again, his accomplishments are way more. Last week we talked about more than anything we could ask, more than your request than today. More than we think. We've titled your message today, More Than Your Dreams. More than your dreams, which can be a huge thing if you really think about it. We've all been dreamers. We've all dreamed before. You know, maybe not so much anymore. As we get a little bit older, our dreams tend to fade. But especially when you're younger, man, we've got big, big dreams when we're kids. And anyone who has kids can understand huge dreams. Like when you're a kid, you're like, I'm going to be a baseball player, an astronaut, a movie star, and the president all at once. We have these huge, unbelievable dreams that as we get older, realize, you know, that's not attainable. At least that's what we tell ourselves. And we just begin to let those dreams fade. But even as adults, even if you haven't dreamed in quite a while, I can guarantee you this. Anytime you're driven to Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, you begin to dream just a little bit. I was in Chattanooga this week at a conference, and as soon as I entered Georgia, because you got to go through Georgia to get to Tennessee or get to Chattanooga there, I see the signs. You do the same thing. Powerball, $425 million, baby. And when we see those signs, we begin to dream. We're like, you know what? I could go for $425 million. I'd be okay. You know, we don't even talk about taxes then. We're still talking about the whole $425 million. But if you'll notice, we dream small to begin with. We're real modest. We think highly of ourselves. We're like, you know what? I'm just going to pay off the house. Maybe get a new house, get a pool, new car. I'm just going to put the rest in the bank. I'm just going to live off the interest. And you know, I'll give a lot of it away. And before we know it, man, we got houses all over the world. We got private jets. We're buying cum. We're doing all sorts of stuff. We're blowing this money. We have these huge dreams for this insane amount of money. We begin to dream about that. It's always fun to do that. But in our own lives, we begin to let those dreams Fade. And, you know, as we're concluding the school year, you know, we've had graduations the past couple of weeks. And I can remember when I was graduating high school, I had this, this kind of silly, stupid dream. My buddy Brett and I, we had a bunch of invitations left over, you know, those graduation invitations that you get. And we get those invitations. We send them out. We're inviting everyone to our graduation. Honestly, we don't care if anyone shows up for the graduation. We send those out. Why? So we can get gifts. And gifts for high school graduating seniors mean some money. Y'all just send me money. I don't care if you show up or not. So we had a bunch of these left over, probably 60 or so. And we're like, you know what? We need to get these things out there. So we started writing things down, like, to my favorite aunt, to the best uncle, to my beloved neighbor. And we stuffed every single one of those ready to go. And we drove through Mountain Brook, popping these things in people's mailboxes, just hoping, hey, someone rich is going to get this and say, you know, I don't remember who this Matt Powers guy is, but I guess we know I better send him 100 bucks. Now I'll say we, we, we didn't get anything. That was kind of a dumb dream of ours. But it was a dream we had nonetheless. 
Sad part is many of us, even on the dreams that, that can mean something, the dreams that chase after, we just don't go after it. You know, we never really say, man, I, I can't wait. And I dream to flunk out of high school, get addicted to drugs, spend some time in jail, have failed marriages, ruin relationships. You know, we don't ever dream things like that, but as life happens and things go on that we didn't expect, we let those dreams fade. Harvard Business Review did a study not too long ago and was asking the question, why are we not accomplishing our goals and our dreams? And some of the top answers were there was a fear of failure, which we all go through sometimes. There was a lack of self-belief. We just don't think that we can. There was pressure and judgment from others where they hear our dream and they say, well, that's, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard of. Why would you even try to do that? There was this lack of discipline where we just can't do it, changing priorities, but mostly people just settled. They got in a spot, they got comfortable, and they just settled. This study also showed that only 8% of people will actually achieve those goals and see those dreams actually happen. Only 8%. Why does that happen? It's because we settle. And we forgot, no matter where we are, that we're meant for more. It's what this whole series is about. We're meant for more. It's sad when we see people give up on our dreams. But it's even more sad when we give up on the dream that God has for us. That's the sad part. We are truly meant for more. So today, we're going to walk through three things. We're going to be in Jeremiah chapter 1 all day today. We're going to walk through three things that my hope is can change the perspective just a little bit to realize the dreams that God has for our lives. So let's pray and we'll dive in to his word. God, we love you. We're so thankful to be together. Every single person across all experiences, both here at Alabaster and Columbiana, those watching online, God, we're just thankful to be in your presence together. I just want to pray over every single one of us that our hearts are open, our minds are open, our ears are open, just to receive the word that you're giving us today. No matter what we walked in here with, maybe baggage that we're carrying, God, I just pray that we'll surrender it to you. We'll just give it to you. That we'll open up our hearts to the dreams and the ideas that you have for our lives and believe that you are who you say you are and you can make things come true. Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. So number one, the first thing, if we're going to chase after his dream, it's going to be more than our own dreams, we need to seek his dream. Seek his dream. You may think, well, Powers, that's, that's obvious and simple. It is. So why is it so difficult for us to do that? To chase after his dream. Because he has a dream for you. Believe it or not, God has a dream specifically just designed for you. How do we know this? Well, the Bible talks about it. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. God's talking to Jeremiah the prophet here, and he says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Think about that for a second. I knew you before you were even born. And before that, I set you apart. You're not going to run with the rest of the crowd. I set you apart. I set you up for something special. You're going to be the prophet to many nations. But he doesn't just tell Jeremiah this. We see this in the Bible in several different spots. Look at Psalm 139, verse 16. It says, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. Just sit on that for a second. God knew you before you were ever even created. He had everything laid out for you. Before anything had passed. He has a dream for your life. What does that look like? What does that look like and why is it so difficult for us to do that? Most of us dismiss the dreams that God has for us because, well, many of our dreams that we dreamed as a child, we've let be ruined as we get adults. We just let them fade away. We don't think that we're good enough. And it's awesome when we see people be able to fulfill their dreams and we think, well, that's great for them, but can't happen for me. But that's not necessarily true. Why? Because God set you apart from the very beginning. My wife, I've seen her have huge dreams, dreams that a lot of people would look at and say, 
That's cute. Have fun. Whenever she was in high school, she decided she wanted to try out for the softball team. She grew up playing but was unable to continue playing in high school for reasons well beyond her control. And it's not like the softball team was bad in high school. They were actually really good, winning state championships. There's a whole lot of talent there. So she's like, you know, I'm going to try. This is something I really want to do. So she did, and she made it, and she contributed. And she actually even had a scholarship offer from Alabama State, but she turned that down to chase after some dude in Tuscaloosa instead. I'd say it worked out well for her. <laughs> Just my, my thought. So after that, she's like, well, what else, what, what else do I want to do? She was always really interested and worked for doctors uh, and very curious about the, the human body and the reason why we operate in which we do. And she learned all about the muscles. She decided to be a massage therapist. She put herself through massage therapy school on her own and decided, I'm going to be a massage therapist. I think I could be really good at this. Um, and not only did she just become a massage therapist, but, man, she, like, did it for the stars. She somehow got involved with different entertainers and different musicians and, you know, traveled with people all over the place. She worked in Birmingham, Atlanta, and Nashville, especially at the different concert venues, working with the biggest stars on the planet at the time. It's like, that's awesome. But she quickly realized that this life of drugs and alcohol, party and rock and roll, probably not the best for her. So she got out of that life. It's like, well, what am I going to do next? Her dad was a professional wrestler growing up. It's like, you know what? Chase after that dream next. Unbelievable dreams. And she did that. She pursued a wrestling career, making it to the pinnacle, the goal of WWE, where she goes and she has a contract offer from WWE. She has these unbelievable goals and dreams, and she does everything in her power to chase after them. And many of us would look at that and be like, well, that's cool, but that's not me. You see, for many of us, our dreams are just a, a little sliver, small slice of hope. That's all it is. It's just a little hope that we eventually just grow out of or we completely give up on. That's our dreams. But for God's dreams, the amazing thing about it is his dreams for your life do not expire. Instead, it is more of a vision for your entire life, seen before you were ever even Born. Walt Disney had this plan and this dream of Walt Disney World in Florida. And if you know anything about Disney now, you ever been? It is massive. It is the happiest place on earth. It is insane. It's the only place that can take $10,000 from you and you walk away smiling because it was so amazing. <laughs> it's true. But this was his vision was Disney World. And whenever it finally opened, Walt Disney had passed away before it opened. It was overheard someone saying, man, I wish Walt could have lived to have seen this. And one of the executives heard this, and the executive said, oh, he did see it. That's why it's here. Amen. He had this dream. It was built up in his mind, in his imagination. He saw it long before it ever came to be, to be the happiest place on earth. When our country was born. We all think of July 4th, 1776, the Declaration of Independence. We're finally a free country. No, that's not actually what happened. The Declaration of Independence was, was signed on July 4th, 1776, but we didn't actually have freedom until September 3rd of 1783, a little over seven years after the Declaration of Independence was signed. Why is that important? They believed it was going to happen far before it ever did. God formed you and knew everything about you before you were ever born. Just like the country of the United States, just like Disney, before it ever happened, God saw this dream for your life. For us to be able to seek his dream, it takes great faith for us to be able to do that. It requires unbelievable faith to see that through. Pastor Rick Warren said this, he said, Great faith inspires great dreams, and great dreams require great faith faith. For us to be able to truly seek his dream, we have to have faith, which means we got to believe in something, even though sometimes we can't necessarily see it at all. Dreaming is saying, I believe there's something better out there. I believe there's something different for my life. I believe there's something different that's going to happen. That's what a true dream does. But for most of us, our dreams are inwardly focused. We're worried about our possessions, our career, our money, our relationships, our status. We're worried about all of the stuff. But when God looks at you, he has eternity in mind. 
He's not thinking about the things of this world that will be here today and they'll be gone tomorrow. But he is thinking about eternity. He's thinking about forever. He is preparing us for eternity. That is what his dream is for our life. So a decision needs to be made. Am I going to choose God's dream for my life? Or am I going to chase after stuff for myself? We seek his dreams. Number two, seek his design. His design for our life. Not only his dream for our life, but his design. Look at Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. This is Jeremiah talking back to God in this moment. He says, oh, sovereign Lord, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. And the Lord replied, don't say I'm too young. For you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people. For I will be with you and I will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth. Jeremiah had this idea. He's like, no, listen, hey, thanks, big guy. That's, that's awesome and everything. I'm glad you think so highly of me, but, I, dude, I, I, I'm, I'm too young. All right, I just, you, got, you got me mixed up with the other Jeremiah in the other county. Go see him. He's got you covered. God's saying, no, I know you think you have this figured out. I know you think you know what this plan is supposed to be. But no, remember, I set you apart. I appointed you for something completely different. See, Jeremiah had this design in which the way his life was going to be. God had different plans. I think we can all relate to that because so many of us think that our way is the best way. Any stubborn people in here, we decide we're going to do something. We don't want to hear it from anybody else because it's going to be my way or no way because I'm right and you're wrong. We do this thing with God every single day. We do this song and dance thinking that we know better than he does, and we don't. How many of us know whenever sometimes we look back at that, we're like, man, I wish I, wish I would have listened. In uh, November of 2022, our pet, longtime pet, Henry, passed away. He was 17 years old. He had been with us our entire life. The kid, the kids, that was the only pet that they ever Knew And whenever he died, listen, we knew it was going to happen at some point. He was getting really, really old. Kids wanted him buried in the backyard. So what do you do as a parent? You do whatever you can for your kids, especially in this moment of difficulty. So I'm researching. I'm like, all right, well, you know, we're going to bury a dog in the backyard. We better figure out the right way to do it. Okay, I can't just like throw him in a hole and let that be it. There's probably got to be some sort of protocol, right? So I make sure we get everything together. We have it all done. The next day, we're going to bury him. So I have everything prepared and ready, and listen, I begin digging a hole, and I don't know if you ever dug a hole before, but it's perhaps the most difficult thing a human being can do. <laughs> it's so hard. Like you just dig and dig and dig, and you're getting all the dirt out of there, and you turn around, and there's still just as much dirt as there was before. I don't know what it is. You know, on TV, they make it look so easy. You just dig a hole, and like, oh, eight-foot hole, we're ready to go. It doesn't work like that. That's not real life, all right? So I'm out there, I'm digging this hole, and it's cold, and it's beginning to rain a little bit. My family's inside, just chilling out, waiting for the hole to be done. And I'm out here digging. And we're like well over an hour into this thing. I've got it wide enough, but I'm still digging around. They come out, they check on me. Hey, how's it going? I'm still digging this stupid hole is what I'm doing. There's these rocks, and there's these roots, and i got to deal with all of this stuff. They're like, oh, well, here's some water. Let us know when you're done. Our stupid hole. Gotta, my wife and daughter come out, and they say, hey, uh, how's it going? I'm still digging. Can't you see? I'm so frustrated at this point. They're like, hey, what's, what's that? It's like some sort of stupid root. I can't get to, get to stop. i got to get rid of this root so I can get around it and dig this hole. And my wife's like, maybe that, that doesn't quite look like a real. Like, it's a stupid root. I've been out here longer than you have. I know what I'm doing. So I'm digging this hole. They go back inside as soon as they shut the door. Finally, I've had it. I'm, bam, I've severed the roots. Finally. And then immediately, turns out, root was a gas line. So I got natural gas spilling all over the place. I'm like, call 911. I don't know what to do in this situation. My first thought goes to stupid cartoons and movies and TV and everything. Like, I got a gas leak. Clearly someone's going to drive by, light a match, and flick it all the way up my driveway, over the fence, into the backyard, and everything's going to explode. Man, the fire department comes out, the gas company comes out, they fix it. 
like that. And had I just listened to someone else's plan, maybe it wouldn't have gone so bad. Hindsight's 2020, right? But we do this all the time. God's like, hey, are, are, you, are you, you, sure, you sure about this? Like, yes, God, I've been at it all the time. Get away. Sure enough, we look back and we're like, man, I wish I listened, would have listened long before. He has a design for all of us. What that looks like, we don't necessarily know. But we continually make the same excuses that Jeremiah did here. Too young. Nobody's going to listen to me. And that's what we do. What's your excuse? Why are you not chasing after God's dream for your life? Your plan. His plan for you. What's the reason? It's a difficult question to answer. I'm scared. I, I don't know what it looks like. Let too many people down. Made too many mistakes. Whatever that list is, we have a list of reasons why we can't. You know, when you look throughout the Bible, we see all of these people, and we hear these great stories, and we think, well, I'm not them. And you're right, you're not them. You were never supposed to be them. You are supposed to be you. Because remember, he formed you in your mother's womb before you were ever born. No, everyone saw Moses. Moses was just that dude who killed the Egyptian and couldn't speak very well. God saw a leader. We look at David, everyone saw David as just Jesse's son, that little kid out in the fields tending to the sheep. God saw a king. When everyone else just saw Mary, this teenage girl, nothing special, God saw this unbelievable woman who would give birth to the Savior of the world. When everyone else saw Peter, this shady fisherman, God saw a rock on which he would build his church. When everyone else saw Paul, they were running because he was just known as the guy who did nothing but kill Christians. But God saw a man who would change the world. So when people see you, what do they see? Truth is, it doesn't matter because God sees something else. It's not that you can't. It's that we won't. It's his dream. It's his design. You know, when my wife decided she was going to have this wrestling career and she goes to the pinnacle, she goes to WWE and realizes, hey, this isn't quite what it was cracked up to be. During that transition and during that time she was having a wrestling career, she, you know, got much closer to the Lord. She was seeking after Jesus and everything that she was, she was doing and really questioned, God, is this where you want me to be? And she transitioned out of a wrestling career into film, into movies, and into TV, and quickly decided, hey, I don't want to be an actress. I don't want that at all. I'm going to take my wrestling background. I'm going to go into stunts. And she did. She got on TV. She got on movies, worked with the biggest stars in the world. Captain America, Melissa McCarthy, The Rock, Kevin Hart, one of those Jonas Brother guys, Jack Black. Unbelievable stuff in these roles and these, these jobs and the stunts. Just started rolling in. If you don't know anything about the entertainment industry, it's nasty. It's dark. And she's beginning to be able to have some faith conversations and conversations about Jesus with these people. And man, all sorts of amazing stuff is beginning to roll in. And then COVID happens. Shuts down the entertainment industry. Just done. God, what are you doing? Thought this was, hey, what's happening here? 2021 rolls around, things are starting to come back up. People are going to begin filming and everything again. Jobs are rolling in. She's going to be gone here. She's going to be doing this. She's going to be doing this, working on this. Unbelievable. And I've told this story before, but in February of 2021, she's in a car accident. Severely damages her, really her left side. She's got no feeling in her shoulder, her arm, all the way down to her fingertips. She can't use her hands uh, whatsoever. She's been eight months without being able to feel anything in her arm, and after numerous doctor's visits, specialists, all sorts of treatment and therapy and, and all sorts of medicine, it just wasn't working, and finally, she gets her feeling back like that, and it was all an act of the Lord, I can promise you that. She finally has surgery, get all of that repaired. Well, if you know anything about stunts, can't do all that with that type of injury. So that's gone. No one's calling anymore. They've all moved on to other things. 
God, what are you doing? What am I supposed to do? God, I thought this is what you wanted me to do. Where are you in all of this? I think a lot of you can relate to that and say, God, where are you? It's his design for our life. It doesn't always look the way we thought. Listen, God not only just sees you who, for who you are, but sees you for who you are supposed to be. His dream for your life. His design for your life. Number three is his direction. Seeking his direction. Let's pick back up in verse 9, Jeremiah chapter 1. Puts his hand over his mouth. He says, look, I've put words into your mouth. Today I point you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. And in verse 19 it says, they will fight you, but they will fail. For I am with you, and I will take care of you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Immediately, that's what he says. Again, I am with you. I will take care of you. I, the Lord, have spoken. He's saying, y'all, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard sometimes. You're not going to know what's happening. You're not going to know what it's going to look like. But I am with you, and I will take care care of you. I've set you on this course. Kingdoms are going to rise. They're going to fall. You're going to have to tear them down. You're going to have to build things back up again, but don't worry about it. I'm with you, and I will take care of you forever. That's the promise of God. I am with you, no matter what it looks like, and I will take care of you forever. So how do we do this? Same thing he did for Jeremiah. We use his words. It's all his words. Well, I, you know, how in the world am I supposed to have his words? What's that? Immerse ourselves in his word so we can have his words in all the situations that we need to. If we ask God for the words and we constantly seek after it, he is going to give us exactly what we need when we need it. It is by his authority. He told Jeremiah from the beginning, I have set you apart and I have appointed you. He has appointed every single one of us just like he appointed Jeremiah. It looks a little different, but he's appointed us. He's saying it's going to be hard, but he enables us. He qualifies us. It's what he does. That's who he is. He's saying you're going to have to tear things down. You're going to have to build things up. It's not going to make sense. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult, but what? I am with you. I am faithful. I'll be with you. I am faithful. I'll be with you. I am faithful. I will provide your every single need. If you'll just let me. Just let me. You know, watching my wife's story and these dreams that she had, being able to accomplish these dreams and see it happen is unbelievable. But, you know, she's out of the movie career, out of the wrestling career, no more, you know, traveling with musicians and any of that. What in the world are we supposed to do? She's always had a passion for the youth and for students and around that time we hired Bing and she goes picks Elkies up from from practice and the very next day she has a job offer to be an assistant volleyball coach and softball coach and after talking and questions and prayer she accepts that position and it's been an unbelievable experience we know this is exactly what God wanted in this time this was part of his design part of his dream part of his direction because now at my house, about once a week, there's a Bible study going on with some softball players and volleyball players. Girls who didn't know Jesus, far from God, now wanting to show up, asking questions, trying to learn more about what this Jesus thing is all about. Now, much of us would probably look at this and say, man, rock stars. WWE, blockbuster films, to a coach at a high school in Alabama, what a failure. Remember, God has eternity in mind when he looks at all of us. Even though it doesn't look the way that we thought that it should. I have no doubt in my mind when she sees the Lord one day, well done. Say, hey, you, you remember that softball player that was on all sorts of trouble? She made it. 
Remember those kids at school no one wanted to talk to? They were nothing but trouble. They made it. And so what we think our dreams are, man, they're, they're, they're all for this world and what we can accomplish. Man, he has a path and a plan and a purpose and a dream for your life that would blow your mind. It will never look how you thought. But I can promise you it's worth every single bit of it. So I want to invite our worship team back up, and we'll pray in just a moment. But I think one of the reasons we struggle with this idea of his dream for our life, is what we talked about earlier, it requires great faith. I think we're honest with ourselves. We struggle with that from time to time. Matthew chapter 17, there's this guy who has a son, and he comes to Jesus. He's like, Jesus, my son, he's demon-possessed. Can you help a guy out? I went to your disciples, but they didn't do anything. They were unable to do it. And Jesus, he was upset with his disciples in this moment, but of course he does what he always does. He casts out the demon. Disciples get with him later. They're like, Jesus, what happened? Why were we not able to do this? And he says in verse 20 of Matthew 17, he says, you don't have enough faith. You don't have enough faith. He says, I tell you the truth. If you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, which if you don't know is one of the smallest seeds there is. He says, you could say to that mountain, move from here to there, and it would happen. He says, nothing would be impossible. And I think we'll read that and we'll hear that and be like, yeah, man, God moves mountains, baby. He's doing it. Jesus can move mountains for me. And he's saying, if you have enough faith, you too can do that. Do you have enough faith that he's going to fulfill that dream in your life? Because if you do, you take that step. Not knowing what it's going to look like, you take that step. Listen, God's plan for your life, he's telling you right now, the plan I have for your life is for you to be in my plan. And that's all you need to know. I'm not gonna give you the whole story. I'm not gonna give you the whole plan, but you don't wanna miss this. All I need you to do is just be faithful with what I put in your hands now. And trust me, have faith as small as a mustard seed. Nothing is impossible without God. For remember, I am with you, and I will take care of you. It's one of the last things Jesus tells his disciples also before he sends them to heaven. He says, hey, go make disciples of all nations. But he says in Matthew chapter 28, verse 28, he says, be sure of this, I'm with you always until the end of age. It wasn't just for the disciples, it was for you. He's with you always until the end of age. And it all takes with that step to Jesus. It takes giving our life to Jesus to be able to see the dream that he has for our life. So if that's you, it starts with a decision. It starts with a prayer. It's confessing with our mouth and believing in our hearts. You just simply say, God, I need you. You just make that prayer, God, I need you. I'm asking for forgiveness for all of my sins. God, I recognize that it was you who sent Jesus to die on a cross for me. It was your power that resurrected me. And God, I want to make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life and make him number one in my life. And God, for all of our friends here today, God, I know as difficult as it is that we'll set our dreams aside for yours, that your dreams will align with what we have going on. But God, we will trust your design. We will trust your direction. We will trust your plan. But God, whatever it looks like, we will know that you are good. God, we will believe in our hearts when you say, I will be with you and I will protect you. That I will be with you to the end of ages. And Lord, we're going to trust you fully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, church. Can we honor God this morning together? Hey, if you made a decision to follow Jesus today, please mark that on your Connect card. Uh, we want to celebrate with you. And we want to send you some next steps in your faith journey. It's not the end. It's the beginning uh, of an incredible journey with Jesus, all right? And we're going to transition to an opportunity to give. If you're our guest today, this isn't for you. It's how we push the mission forward. So we would even say, if you're a guest, don't give if you're a guest. This is for those of us who push, uh, who call Cultivate Church home. It's how we do what God's called us to do as a church. And, you know, I was, I was thinking through this idea of, of 
meant for more. What would God do more than enough as it relates to generosity? And you know, one of the most, uh, to me, one of the coolest scriptures as it relates to that is, is in Genesis chapter 12. It's God speaking to Abram. He, hadn't, he has yet to be even become Abraham. And God just gives him this promise. He says, I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you famous. And then he says, you'll be a blessing to others. And then he says something uh, kind of profound. He says, I'm going to bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you, and all of the families of the earth will be blessed through you. And that word through is significant as it relates to what it looks like for us to live generous lifestyles. A lot of times we think of generosity as it's just us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bless those people. I'm going to do something good. And we think it's by us a lot of times. But God said, no, no, no. Any good thing that God's ever done through you or through me, it's been through us. What does that mean? It's, it's an old cliche statement that says we're blessed to be a blessing. And so if God can trust you with resources, then his resources will never be in short supply. It says that my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And there will always be plenty left over for you to be a blessing to those around you. So here's my challenge as we walk out of here today, as we step into summer. Here's my challenge for you uh, as it relates to generosity. Simply say this prayer. God, who do do you want to bless through me this week? Look for opportunities to be generous in your context. And I promise you, God will blow your mind with the opportunities that he throws your way, that he brings into your life to be a blessing to others. And you'll never have lack to do it, all right? Hey, would you stand with me? I'm going to pray a blessing over you as you're dismissed. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for speaking to us, God, that we walk out of this place inspired to live our life on purpose in a way that honors you. So use us this week. Father, bless somebody through us. And God, may it make a difference, a significant difference in all of their lives. Thank you, Lord, for using us. In Jesus' name, amen.